on the air, episode 97, Marker. Oh my goodness, live from the Locker Studios in sunny San Diego, California. On the air is on. Yeah, I do. Keep playing because something's missing. Well done. It's an all boy band. That's power when you can do yes. it. Yes. That's. Uh, uh, can I ask you, James? Yes. Um, James mu James uh, East uh, from the East Musical Family. Uh, is our music director. What, what did you scare off uh, Tomoka, you who know, plays with Andy Grammer and uh, April Leslie, who plays with Michael Bolton? Did you? Are they gone forever? <laughs> no, no. Because this not is forever. not a good look. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, can you stand up there? Yeah. <laughs> Mary Bird Godwin, our uh, our uh, den mother, and of course uh, TV show host. I, if you just stand there with a horn, yeah, bring, bring look, her up. Please. It would look better. Please. Give her a ukulele. I don't care, because this is a bad look. Hey. I'm just telling you right now. Hey, That's all right. Do we have the sax? Do we have? The we got. Uh, uh, we got a hippie, we got uh, three musicians, and a couple guys from SAIC and Qualcomm. Wow. That's good. <laughs> Steve Dillard, of course, uh, plays with the Righteous Brothers and Huey Lewis. And uh, who have, who have you all played with again, Steve? Yeah, talk to Mike. Paul Anka. Yeah. Uh, Righteous, Brothers. Righteous Brothers. Huey Lewis. Huey Lewis. Leonard Skinner. Leonard Skinner. Yeah. Johnny Guitar Watson. Wow. Hey. What about you, Tripp? You've, you're a Kenny Loggins guy, and who else? Who, who have you played with? Hey, uh, Little River Band. Wow. Four Tops. Reminiscing. Wow, you guys have to learn that. And he's played with Peter Sprague for a while. Well, Peter Sprague's his brother, of course. <laughs> Same and then, parents. And of course, James East, who's played with Eric Clapton and Lionel Richie and, and uh, uh, Brian Jordan, who's played with uh, Dave Matthews and James Brown. Wow. And uh, uh, who's uh, Lauren Hill? Wow. Uh, and then there's Trace and Mark. So yeah. that's working. <laughs> hey, wow. this is. We this is. These guys. This Good is to Good to see you. They're playing on episode 97. We're almost getting to 100. Wow. Episode 97. That's I can't believe it. Um, can I have a blam from you guys? Just give me something. Like, uh, g on, give baby. me. Yeah, that's it. Come on, huh? Hmm? Eight, one, right? two, yeah. three, four. Like that. That's Love good. It. You want it again? You can call for it. <laughs> Come on. Give Tommy a blam. Give Tommy the end of that James uh, Brown song. Bom, 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 bom. Go for it. Oh, okay. Okay. Ready? Three, four. But then they don't resolve. But isn't it kind of unsettling that they don't resolve? Yeah. <gasps> See? Right? Right. Hey, right. Here we go. Hey, we have a great show today. Start I can't the show. believe the three guests we have on. All right, As a matter of fact, let's bring them on oh, now. We have four. I've got a surprise guest for you. I haven't told you about really? it. Really? All right. From KUSI, good evening, San Diego, by way of Costa Rica and UCLA, ladies and gentlemen, Francella Perez. There she is. Come on. Conversation a hundred times before oh you've done the Oh my God! I never believed that you. You I'm just blown, didn't believe it. I'm blown away. Good. I'm jealous. You and Liz. Sorry. You and Liz Alvarez. We've had this conversation before. Have you see. Come on. Oh my gosh! I could do the bump with you, but. <laughs> <laughs> By 1970 call, they want their shag carpet back. Did you say the bump? Wow. Hey, I couldn't do that, so I'm actually that Thank you, Dream Tommy nice. Dreamweaver Weaver Sublime. Yes, you guys are amazing. Well done. That was great. That was impressive. Wow. Was and she picked that walk-on song. Yeah. Which was, of course, uh, Vivir Mi Vida. Yes. Yeah, Mark Anthony. Vivir Mi Vida. There you go. There you know, right? I'm blown away. Oh. You, you and I have had this conversation before. I don't remember that conversation. It's when you, it first, got, it's when you first got to the st station. It might have been five years early ago. in the morning yeah. at 5 in the morning, I so I don't remember that. She doesn't, she doesn't do that shit. No, though. I don't. I can't believe we finally got you in here. I know. I know. This, I, I went to the show, the old, the old studio. Yes. So. Oh, that's this right. This is beautiful. Yeah. 
That's it's right. a, I mean, and I'm, you live around the corner. I do. Yeah, that was a plus. We've yes. been trying to get you up here to the new studio for some time here. You're just busy. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. Well, Surrounded by stars, I was listening to well, you thank guys. You. Like, my goodness. Yeah, right. Everybody here. Can I thank ask you. you something real quick? Um, was did we did we just go through a record like because we uh. lived on the sun for two weeks? Uh. Well, was, was this a record, or were you just hypersensitive because we're hypersensitive right now? Uh, yeah, we had record-breaking temperatures for wow. sure. It was yeah. a, it was definitely historic kind of. A it felt like wave. we were living on the sun. But it was. Don't you think? But it was the humidity. I yeah. think that's what made it the worst. It was worst. like living in Miami. Because yes, yes, the dew points were in the seventies. Wow. I mean, that is no idea that's what you said definitely there. Florida. <laughs> well, I mean, it was just so humid for such a long period of time during the day and night that we never got a break. Here's a safety tip. So we're tip. not used to that. We right? would all like to know what the difference between humidity and dew point is. Because you guys always say, who oh, the dew point is. And go, oh, yeah, the dew point, Tommy. Yeah. What is the dew point? Is the, the, dew, dew, the dew point is humidity? Is the same a measurement thing? of how much moisture there is okay. in the atmosphere. Right. The higher it is, so the more So the higher it is, anything that's 60 degree dew point and yeah. 61 and, and above. Yeah. Uh, that is definitely muggy and sticky. Uh, so that's usually what I use for humidity in terms of mugginess. Muggy and sticky like are what we call... Like tropical moisture, <laughs> we use a dew point. For relative humidity, it's more like, um, you know, how much... Uh, the amount of, uh, of uh, moisture there is before there's saturation. Wow, see, so, you, know you never knew that, did you? And moisture and sticky so up there in like, our horn more, section. Yeah, so will you... <laughs> Just saying. Moisture yes. sticky. Yeah. Is there any more uncomfortable word than moist? Mo moist. Yeah, moist. it is. It was yeah. moist outside. Oh, it was. So you know what? We have a lot to ask, Francella. All right. But let's, let's bring out more of the guests first. Right. Yes. In San Diego in the 80s, we had Eric Coriel. We had Dan Fouts. We had B100, Jeff and Jared, Garvey's home run, <laughs> Bavacqua's home run. Ladies and gentlemen, get on number seven, Kurt Bavacqua. Yeah. Of course, I, we are all, as San Diegans, lifelong San Diegans, huge fans of Kirby yes. Bachman. But you should, I said, what does he look like now? Because he always looked like Magnum P.I. back in the day, right? <laughs> he had that mustache. And I had one of our producers saying, what does he look like now? And they sent me the wrong picture because I walked in there and said, it can't be Kirby. Because the guy <laughs> they sent funny. me looked like he was like 10 years older than you. Honestly, they sent me the wrong picture. I got to find the picture and send it to you. Yeah, we have to find it. It looks you well, look let's great. Let's show everybody. You look like you can still play. Uh, you look well, I play a little golf. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. You know how we got Kurt to be here? How? I, I messaged him on Facebook. Did you really? Yeah. And you you returned my message, and thank you very much for being yeah. here. Do you it's live here in pleasure. San Diego still, in San Diego County? I live, if, I wouldn't be here if I didn't live, like, <laughs> about eight minutes away. <laughs> <laughs> But you were so iconic <laughs> in, in this town, and I love that you stayed here because because I think San Diego, uh, you know, you were beloved by San Diego in, during those years that you played baseball and beyond. It was a good relationship, uh, and I was very fortunate. I got it started doing a little radio and TV here, and just ended up staying. I mean, yeah. I got traded here in '79. I know. That's I was a long time. I was in high everywhere. school. I was in high school. Everywhere. That's a long time ago. Yeah, but you were one of those guys that, that was right in the meat of everything going on in San Diego. I, I, I always say that 1980, things were just about right here in San Diego as far as population goes, traffic goes, our sport. We had all sports teams here at the time. If I'm not mistaken, we even had the Conquistadors as a basketball team. We had the, we had the Gulls as a hockey team. Yep. We had the Padres as a baseball team. We had the Chargers, although they're dead to me now. Um, as, <laughs> as a for Kurt. sure, for sure. But Kurt, game two of the World Series, fifth inning, I mean, that has set you up forever in San Diego. Your royalty, your iconic, just from that one home run in the fifth inning. Can you do? You, what do you yeah. remember from that? You know, from that home run, which you've probably talked about millions of times. Well, I remember hitting it, and <laughs> the um, it, running around the bases. I have no memory of. Wow, because you were jumping up right before you got to first. You were jumping up. That, and down. that was the last of any memory, and it, it was weird because I had talked to Garv about the home run that he had hit off of Lee Smith that right. you mentioned yeah. earlier. And he goes, you know, it was like I, I went into a vacuum. And that's exactly what it was like. Yeah. 
I mean, you got 50,000 people screaming, and yeah. you just did something that you dream about Here doing right from the time you were a Here kid. We Bam. So it was, yeah. uh, it was fun. Yeah, that's and that's the Murph. Remember, that's I, I think I don't know if it was called the Murph back then. Or it was still called San Diego Stadium back then. But I'll tell you what, um, I have a, I got a question for you, real quickly, and we got a million questions for you. But as you watch Major League Baseball today, and you, and you see the Padres or any other team right now, what's the biggest difference that you see uh, in in the game today than when you played? I think the approach, the approach by the players, especially okay. the hitters, mm -hmm. um, the pitchers uh, train differently. Uh, they train for short sprints. Yeah. You know, it's almost like being a marathoner opposed to a sprinter. Yeah, right. You, you know, you train differently. Yeah. And, and they're doing that now. And then the approach hitting-wise, I think, is terrible. Um, it's, it's unfortunate for the fans because they're not – I mean, you see everybody stand on their feet naturally when somebody hits a home run. Right. But the next best to me – most exciting play in baseball is triple. Sure. You don't see too many of them anymore because guys aren't trying to hit the ball into the gap the way they used to. They're trying to elevate it and get it out of the ballpark. Yeah. Plus they've they're making ballpark they've made ballparks much smaller yeah. to where triples aren't that prevalent in the right. game anymore. Right, exactly. And it's it's just unfortunate. Yeah, and you do, you're right. You do see pitchers coming in for an inning and a half at a time. I mean, how many times have you seen position players have to come in as pitchers just this year alone? That, you never saw that before, ever. No, it, it, it used to be something that we all wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> now taking the mound. Yeah, Kurt, we all, Kurt, 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 we that, all that, that, wanted to. Uh, I actually pitched in Puerto Rico for an inning one night, and that, and that was it. Yeah. I never wanted to do it again after I... After I got to I love it when you see position players, uh, after they're out of pitchers, go up there and pitch. And what they do is they throw the ball, and they're like, <laughs> 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 honestly, Wait. watch it. It's pretty funny. They do the best they can to throw, but they do not want to get hit by Well, them. you're not used to being 60 feet away well, from you're the right hitter. There. So you're right Used funny. to being back in a position And somewhere. speaking about getting hit, and, you know, the day after you were in a, you know, iconic press conference where you called out Tommy Las Lasorda, and uh, he called you out and said some things. I bet you we can play that right now. All right, oh, I Jared, know. let's play it. Tell you what I think about it. I think that is very, very bad for that man to make an accusation like that. That is terrible. I have never, ever, since I've managed, ever told a pitcher to throw at anybody, nor will I ever. Oh, you liar. <laughs> and if I ever did, I certainly wouldn't make him throw at a 130 hitter like Lafay or a Bavacqua who couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat. <laughs> and I guarantee you this, when I pitched, and I was going to pitch against a team that had guys on it like Bavacqua, I sent a limousine to get the to make sure he was in the lineup because I kicked that dead any day in a week. He's a mother Big mouth, I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh, that was hilarious. Uh, and right after that, and right after that. <laughs> yeah, hey, but Kurt, when you when you hear that, I mean you're laughing. And I think it's hilarious. Were you laughing? I bet you were laughing at the time. It, uh, let me tell you a little story. A lot of people don't know. That was not recorded. That audio yeah. was not made that night. Oh, no kidding. No, it wasn't made for about three weeks. No kidding. So Tommy had plenty of time. To chew on it, to cool to off. To chew on it and go through it and make sure that he was going to get every aspect of it the way he wanted it. <laughs> and then Jerry Royce and Jay Johnstone, who were two friends of mine who played for the Dodgers at sure. the time, kept sending this one reporter from the Dodgers flagship radio station mm -hmm. into Lasorda's office every single day. And they knew he was going to go off sooner or later. Because Jay, Jay Johnson was sort of a prankster, wasn't he? Oh, absolutely. Right. Him and Jerry both were. Sure. So one day he finally did. And, and that was the result. And it's funny because the Scripps Rancher old pros that we saw uh, labeled at the beginning of that video, yep. the, there's the guy. They're here in San Diego. Uh-huh. And they put that video together. That got wow. yeah. a Millions. million or so 
Yeah, but views, when Tommy know, Lasorda YouTube passed views. when Tommy Lasorda passed away January of last year, you honored him. I mean, that says a lot about you. <laughs> <laughs> you wore Dodger blue. I'm, well, yeah, I, I wore my favorite hat growing up as a kid, and that was the Brooklyn Dodger hat. Sure. Yes. I, I love that hat. And I love that logo. I love that team. I love Duke Schneider. But I was also a Yankee fan. Mm -hmm. So, but I loved the hat. Yes. And besides, I mean, it, a B for Bavacqua, what can you do? <laughs> exactly. When they moved to L.A., I was done with them, especially when we started playing against them here in San Diego. So and he going back to the 80s was really when it all started. Right. Though so he, he was a, he was honoring the Dodgers, but just not the one that Tommy Lasorda ever coached. <laughs> I, I don't know what they expect, Tommy. Oh, yeah. What, I mean, what are they... The guy dies... Yeah. And they... And everyone's and got calling news you. stations... I was trying to reach you. ...coming to my house, and and I said to every single one of them, I go, do you guys expect me to badmouth this guy? Yeah. He right. just died yesterday. What am I going to do? Right. Yeah. I go, I'm not going to, so don't expect it. Yeah. Well, you're classy. So I don't know about... You are classy, because I badmouth Rusty the very next day. <laughs> <laughs> God rest your soul. Yeah. He was my work wife for 28 years, yeah. I can say. Yeah, there you oh go. Oh, my God. So, Well, I got to tell you, it's so great to have both of you here, but I think we have more people. Yes. I got a million questions for the two of you, because I have so many memories of... You know, I was turning 21 as you were getting drafted to the Padres, which was freaking awesome. That's the greatest time, is when you just finally... Uh, get to bend the elbow uh, at uh, at the Murph and yeah. go watch a Padre game for the first time. It was fantastic. It was awesome. But so someone that can relate to the weather we've been having is Kurt. Kurt grew up in Miami, right? I was just going to say, I know about dew point and humidity. Yeah. <laughs> I was born and raised in Miami Beach. Yeah, so you're wow. used to this. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't know. Last week was pretty tough. Yeah. Let's, it uh, made it. We, got, we got a really special guest, but let's wait for a second. Yeah, because let's, because let's I, I, I want to give him his due. And I also, real quickly, if we can... I got a surprise guest for you uh, at the at the last segment today. Who? Uh, my good friend Lance Weir. Yeah. Who uh, represents Challenge Athletes Foundation. Of course, I, for my 12th year in a row, I'm riding my bicycle from San Francisco to San Diego with Lance. Okay. Wow. We met 12 years ago, and he's still here. I can't get rid of the dad. Yeah. Man. He's going to come say a few words a little bit. All right. On the air, it's on the air. Stand by. We got much more to come. How do you like that, Tommy? Like we got Kurt, Kurt Bavacqua, we got Francella Perez, who is a hell of a salsa dancer and evidenced by her entrance and has educated us on dew point and humidity. Yes. On the air is on the air. Great to have you along. I'm Sully. That's Little Tommy, the blonde Hall of Fame producer. All right, what else you got? Oh, of course, the Sully band. You, do, you guys do sound pretty good. <laughs> I used to say I used to say they don't need me, but you're kind of wedding bandish today without the girls. I'm just gonna tell you. Hey, but you know what? Hey, can I announce? Can we announce what we talked about this morning. Can we yeah. say it? Can we say it? Yeah. yeah. This will be news to Mary too. She'll be super ticked that I'm announcing it now, and she doesn't even know about it. Uh -oh. um, every year. Tommy does this thing called breaking and entering Christmas. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you've heard of it? Yeah. You want to describe it real quick in case somebody you know does, has never seen it? Since 1996, um, we help families in San Diego. And it's called breaking and entering Christmas, where we truly do break into their home and uh, set up Christmas when they're out of the house. And uh, It started out as a like, serious B&E. They'd like, jump through the window. It was. Like, when you I, committed a crime. There was a time when I could <laughs> jump through a window. You, you committed a crime to be Robin Hood. <laughs> There was a time when I could jump through a window, but I, re I do remember that very first one. I went to Kmart. We found out who were we going to help. It was a single dad with uh, two daughters. He just lost his job. And so I went to the Kmart at the time and bought a tree, bought Barbies, uh, food. So, so that his kids could have a Christmas. Yeah, and then when he went out of the house, I went into the house and set up Christmas, and that was the birth of Breaking and Entering How Christmas. many years ago was that? 1996. Wow. And in 1997... Wow. Um, or 1998, uh, speaking of the Padres, a guy named Wally Joyner yeah. called me and said, Tommy, can I take all those faxes at the time that aren't going to be helped? And uh, Wally Joyner uh, took care of a lot of families. He actually paged you and said, yeah. can I use the faxes, oh, yeah. is what he yeah. said. And then uh, every year we've been doing it, 
And uh, we're going to do it again this year on KUSI, oh, Saturday morning, it. December 10th. It's a Saturday KUSI morning, event yes. this year as opposed to a radio event this year. Yeah. yeah. And, of course, uh, Loft 100 Studio, Sully Entertainment Group is going to sponsor this this year. And, of course, we may have live music at 6 in the morning. I'm sure the neighbor will be really happy yeah. about that. It'll be fun. Oh, yeah. You know, since it's Saturday morning, I'm sure Francella is going to be there. Yeah. going to be there. <laughs> you, know, yes. you know what? Every year. Yeah, we're having it in Carl's Mass. It's so special. Good. <laughs> Very special. I love it. But, Every well, year. Well, I think, and I think, is it uh, so? We're going to have a a concert on uh, the day before Thanksgiving. Belly Up is having us do an early show, like from six to eight or something like that. Cool. As a you know, kick off the weekend show for Thanksgiving, but we're going to make it the official kickoff of Breaking and Entering. Can we read the letter at that point, or can we invite the letters at that point? I is start that asking for letters and emails uh, the day after Halloween. So, okay, good. Uh, November first. Will you have that? Will you think you'll have Most it picked likely. by then? So we'll be able to announce who that. Well, we're not going to announce. Do we announce the family, or we pick the family? We change up some things okay, to good. protect their identity. All right, that's good. Fantastic. Right. What, when did it first start? 1996. When James was 40. It was hey. awesome. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Jim. <laughs> All right. I want to bring out this next guy because I've been inviting him. We've been inviting him to do on the air for a while now. He is royalty to San Diego. <laughs> when he's not training <laughs> for Ironman or a marathon, he is. Are you the same? Song. Yeah, Kurt and I want to know something. Yeah, what's and up? Tommy. Uh, yeah, what's up? You have the what's same up? waist size you did in high school? Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Give me a gun. <laughs> Somebody give me a weapon. I'm just yes. Gonna... 32, 34, baby. Yeah, I know. Wow. 32, 34 was uh, the only thing that comes to mind is when I was 32 and 34. There you go, yeah. Wow. Well, thank why you why do I have this thing about mayors that they're, they're supposed to be ugly and you're not supposed to like them? I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're like... I'm trying to break the mold here, Kirk. I'm trying to break the yeah, mold a bit. Yeah, you did. You did good. <laughs> I mean, thank you very much for being here. I can't stop yeah, looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> I've only interviewed him a thousand times. It's all, but remember, I've talked radio guy. I interviewed him on the radio. Never yeah. asked, and I, you know, then, you know, I'm having trouble making eye contact. But <laughs> how do you feel being there? I mean, Hotel Del Coronado and all yeah. the history. I mean, Orville Redenbacher lived in yeah. Coronado. I mean, how do Wizard you... of Oz was Wizard written. Wizard of Oz was written there, inspired by the, the Hotel, Hotel Del construction. Yeah. Wow. Uh, birthplace so, of naval aviation and also where every single Navy SEAL that serves in the Navy um, gets their start. Like, you guys have BUDS training. training in Coronado still to this day, don't still you? Still to this day. Every single U.S. Navy SEAL got their start in Coronado. That's crazy. And uh, everyone that's an aspiring SEAL will, will come there and go through BUDS training. Have you got, I'm sure you've gotten to see that. Have you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's one of those things like when you live in Coronado, um, you get these, you know, the SEALs aren't just SEALs, they're your friends, they're your family. Sure. And uh, so, yeah, I've been very fortunate to make a lot of great friends that are on the teams and kind of see it up close and personal. Did you grow up in San Diego? I grew up in East County, San Diego. No kidding. So, uh, yeah, graduate of uh, Steel Kenan High School. Uh, my dad was a graduate of El Cap. Well, um, let me, so let me stop East County wow. kids. Yeah. JMO and, and the guys El who grew up in San Cap. Diego. When we graduated high school, <laughs> there wasn't a steel. There was no Steel Canyon. Canyon high yeah, school. Yeah. Was there? Yeah, I was actually, it didn't, it didn't I was actually the first graduating class. What year did you graduate? 2004. 2004? Yeah. I bought this shirt in 2004. <laughs> <laughs> 2004. Graduated wow. high school. My goodness. What was your path to being becoming mayor? How did that happen? Mm. Did you, I mean, did you have designs on when you were class president and most handsome in the high school? Did you, did, you, did you have designs on being in politics? Actually, funny enough, and the only election I've ever lost was I was running for sixth grade president in my elementary school, and the popular, good looking girl in elementary school, she beat me. And that was the only election I've ever God, lost. I'm so glad you're over it. I, I, no, no, I know. <laughs> Julia Broadfoot, Julia Broadfoot, wonderful person and a great family out in East County. God, remember the name? I know. I, oh, yeah. Remember what sure. she was wearing? Absolutely. Yeah, but that was, that was nothing. Yeah, yeah. That was fine. Yeah. Hey, so that kind, of, that kind of inspired me to, all right, I got to get her back, right? I got to become yeah. the mayor of San Diego, or excuse me, Mayor Coronado. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I guess the path kind of looked like when I when I graduated high school, went to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo for undergrad, and actually majored in business finance, and always had a uh, always had a fascination with public policy and, and politics. Mm -hmm. But uh, started in the private sector, started my career up in San Francisco, working in the financial industry, mm -hmm. 
made my way back down to San Diego. I was working in fin corporate finance for uh, United Technologies, formerly Goodrich back yeah, in the day. Right. And uh, yeah, big South Bay employer. And, uh, but still kind of had this like, curiosity and fascination with public policy over the years. And so when I was 26, I... Which was yesterday, by the was, way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> About three weeks ago. <laughs> and um, I decided to, to take a shot at running for city council in Coronado and knocked on every single door in the island twice, asked for their vote, and just isthmus. pulled out victory. Good for you. Yeah, the isthmus. Actually, Tombolo. Fun, fun fact. So a lot of people refer to Coronado as an island. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of debate within Coronado. We, we call ourselves the islanders, but we're not really an Well, island, there's the obviously. silver strand that connects you to exactly. Earth. Exactly, but, yeah. But it looks like an island. Next to the mainland. Right. And um, it's actually called a Tombolo, which is a Tom, excuse me, a tide island. Oh, I know Tombolo. He owes me money. Yeah, exactly. he probably does, right? From back in high school. Yeah. Tom, it's called a Tom, Tombolo. Tombolo, that's the correct geographical term for hey, it. Hey, babe. Yeah. I'll meet you at the Tombolo. I know, right? Yeah, island has a little better ring to it. It does, too. Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't be Gilligan's Tombolo. No, no, no. no it would, would be Gilligan's that. Island. Exactly. exactly. No, that's good. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, when we come back, and if I'm not mistaken, um, uh, uh, We've got uh, a ton of stuff. Questions. Tommy's got a ton of stuff on that. I want to find out how, how Francella got her start. I think that I, I want to hear the whole story of how a person goes from a salsa dancer champion <laughs> yes. to a weather person. All right, on the air is on the air. Francella Perez, Kurt Mavacqua, Mayor Richard Bailey, the Sully Man, and a couple other guys. We'll see you in a minute. Steely Damned. Steely Damned? Well, there's a cover band called the Steely Damned. Yeah. And you play with that, don't you? Yes. They're perfect. They, yeah. they honestly sound great. Great to have you guys today. Sullyband.com. <laughs> Just thought I'd throw that out there. So you got a question for Francella. I got a question for Kurt. All right, Francella. So how did you, I know that you got here from another market, but how did yeah. you get into weather? Because you are a meteorologist, aren't you? Is, is that what that means? Uh, am I yeah. <laughs> I started. I was afraid I, yes, I, was afraid I pronounced it wrong. Uh, we started in L.A. Mm -hmm. I went to UCLA, and then after that, I got hired at Fox Sports. Wow. wow. See, I can see that, though, because... because Fox Sports. Off the air, you're a great mom, but you're kind of a dude when it comes to sports. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've been with you I for am. 10, I'm kind of a tomboy. Old. My brothers used to call me a tomboy. How did you know that? Yeah, well, I uh, hung but, out with you at the studio for yes. however long you've been here. So I started Fox Sports, and then from there, I got hired at Telemundo NBC. Uh, we were at the Glendale office, and then from mm -hmm. there we were at the Bob Hope office, mm -hmm. which is a big building. How did you land down here? Was that was that just was that your they, choice, or? Eventually, we were bought out by Channel 32 was bought out by T Telemundo, mm -hmm. and so eventually Channel 32 was sold out. It's KWHY, and then they shut it down, and then M Cohen, Mr. Cohen, Steve Cohen, mm -hmm. our news our director, news director. Uh, he heard about me and he hired me. He saw a video of me that somebody put in YouTube in Spanish because I used to, you know, Spanish See, TV. See, that's vision. And he was like, I want to hire her. And that's, I mean, that, it's, it's God, I'm telling you. The so whole that's thing, it? it's God. So you never had to go to Montana or... Never had to go to... Arkansas Pope. overnights. You never didn't. went to Fresno or <laughs> so Bakersfield or Palm San Springs. Diego. L.A. San Diego. L.A. Yeah, wow. it was it was. You God. started in the second most major market in the country. Yeah, well, it was God. My it goodness. was definitely God, you. yeah. Are you... Um, um, do you have to put together your own maps and stuff when I see you up there? Do you yeah. Because I have a lot of people think we just get there and everything's done for no, you. No, you have to put together all the things. Everything from the minute I wake up to the minute I go to sleep, I'm breathing and watching and eating weather. Dave constantly. Scott. <laughs> Dave Scott said you're the best at the graphics. There's an art to Thank this. You. Standing in front of a blank Bless wall that's painted green and going like this. Backwards. And backwards yeah. and looking at a camera, like as if you're okay. That's, I tried that. The, Three dimensional. I tried that like <laughs> a month ago. I walked on to do a hit at KUSI. 
and uh, Mathis pulled me up there. I'm thought, okay, I yeah, it's like backwards. It's, yeah. yeah, it's it's like trying you know, if doing something in the like mirror. The but it's horrible. You know who was really good? It is horrible. Rusty was so. Rusty good. was good at it. He was so seventy five. <laughs> no, he'll, he'll be doing it. He'll yes. be doing it in a second. Yes. Yeah, I, it, it was. I thought the dueling math is at nails and math. Oh, that dinner. was the, the best. best. So, so the, the, the other thing too, I want to ask you is, you were mornings forever. I used to see you in the morning almost every day. That's when I met you. I was in Good Morning San Diego. That's do you when like I started. E do you like evenings better? Um, I like. Uh, we were talking about that earlier. I like being able to sleep a normal schedule, yeah, you know, right, overall. Right. So, yeah, yes, I do like the evening. I can do mornings, and I've done it, but everything, you know, it's fun. The morning is a different dynamic. Yeah. The evening is just a different dynamic. Exactly. But I wow. do get to sleep better now. Yeah, that's good. I get a, you know, full hour, full eight-hour sleep. Okay, I got a question for Kurt. Yep. Bench clearing bras. <laughs> <laughs> what? We don't see I, those I, very often you anymore. Know, uh, there's a, you know, thank God for Google. There's a story about you uh, on second base with George Brett, and the bench is cleared. When the bench is cleared and you have to fight, do you have to fight, or can you just go away, I don't want to get in trouble, so I don't want to get fined? Or because it's baseball, does everyone fight? <laughs> I, you know, I never thought about that before. Um, yeah, he was just loyal, Tommy. No, no, it, <laughs> it was fight time. Yeah. Yeah. There's no... There's no turning your back. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's yeah, it's go time. time. When it's go time, it's go time. Yeah, it's right? go time. No. But, but Especially if you're the one that... Instigated it. Not, not <laughs> I don't think instigate's the right word. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your history with... Uh, <laughs> so how do you and George <laughs> Brett... <laughs> maybe. Do, you, do you remember that moment? How oh, you, I remember it. So how do yeah. you and George Brett... Uh, what do you, you, you're at second base together. Does someone just say, hey, bleep, 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 bleep? Well, we uh, weren't, like, just standing at the base talking. All right. He had just come into me hard. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was fight time. Yeah. All right. And then the and bench is They clear. don't, they go in to second base now the way we go into second base with our kids every day. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, Mamby Pamby. Kind of, exactly. Yeah. They make sure you're not going to hurt anybody. Right. And you guys went nails up trying to kill each other half the time if you had to. We went to, uh, I wish I knew we were going to talk about this subject because there's there's a video on YouTube that we'll put it in. We'll put it in. <laughs> is uh, uh, Hal McRae going into Willie Randolph? Uh huh. If you can pull that up we on will. video, the, this is the way we used to go into second base. It's a little extreme, but it's the way we used to go into second base, and they outlawed it. I mean, it's you know with the Buster Posey rule at home. Uh, you've got the second baseman where uh, Chase Utley injured the guy's ankle or knee that night in Los Angeles. These are two injuries that happen in sports yeah. where they completely change the dynamic of the game wow. by taking away collision plays or the right for the catcher to be able to block home plate. I got to tell you something. When you're at second base, and you know that you have to score on a base hit to the outfield, mm -hmm. and you look at home plate and you see Bench back there or Steve Yeager back there or Mike Sosha back there, yeah. you know you're not going to get to the home plate. <laughs> yeah. Those guys so were box trucks sitting behind the plate. Whether they have the ball or not, yeah. you're not going to get the home plate. You have to figure out another way to get there. <laughs> and there's only one way to do it. Power. You got to go through them. Yeah, yeah. right. Or That's around right. them. That's right. So then it's go time. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of Johnny Bench and all them, so you get drafted, I think, out of high school in 66, and then you get drafted again in 67 after playing college in Miami. But when you're up there in the late 60s, early 70s, when you're playing in the major leagues, and you're up to bat, and there's, like, Johnny Bench right behind you, are you, like, in your head, are you going, oh, my God, it's freaking Johnny Bench. Like, how, how do you get over the star power of these guys that played with you? Stay right there, because you know what we're going to do? <laughs> we're going to keep you on your couch oh, while they're yeah. thinking about doing this, because this is a fantastic question. I also yeah, want to talk about, there's a couple of really textured eras in baseball, right? Brooklyn Dodgers, right? The 80s was also Billy, those type of guys. Oh, yeah. I want to talk about those eras and then now with the egos. It's a little different. I want to ask Mayor Bailey how he's going to save San Diego. <laughs>
Okay, do the do 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 Fantastic. Thanks. Appreciate it. Good stuff. Guys. Hey, this is a fun show. Somebody's not getting a paycheck this week. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, a couple of things to mention. Um, number one, Tommy has won the argument about where we're going to have our 100th anniversary show. Oh. Um, we don't get to go out, but we also don't get to stay in very good either because uh, apparently we can't have tents here. We were going to have a That's giant right. audience, so we're going to have a, a, uh, a, an intimate audience Right here. Uh, we're gonna, what do you want to call it? 20 people, Mary? What do you think? You think we do 20 people? So you're going to have to get your emails in to, uh, uh, cool. I don't even remember. Is okay. it control room at loft100studios.com? Something like that. Whatever comes up on the screen, send your email there. Um, we're getting closer and closer to episode 100. This is 97. I can't believe it. Wow. Look who showed up on wow. stage. Lance. Lance <laughs> Weir. Hey. I, from Team Chase, from Challenge Athletes Foundation, from um, K9 Companions. Fantastic. Good to see you, bud. How are you? I'm doing great. Are you ready yeah. to go for a ride with me on, uh, on, on, on October 15th? October 15th, um, as we do every year, Challenge Athletes Foundation uh, raises uh, what they call the million dollar challenge. Fortunately, it turns out to be about a million seven every year. But about 100 riders ride our bicycles from San Francisco to San Diego. Uh, uh, in support of challenge athletes. And, and I'll tell you something that's really interesting. You talked about the SEALs. Um, this is not just about uh, uh, wounded warriors, so to speak, and, and folks that have served our country. This is also about accident victims, right? Uh, your story is interesting, and, and we're going to get to that in a second. But it's about anyone who finds himself uh, uh, in, in a challenged position physically. If you, let's say, lose a limb, insurance will pay for a walking limb. Let's say it's a leg, OK? But to get a riding leg or a blade to run in, they consider physical activity to be a luxury. So How do we change that? Well, I, I think we're starting to with Challenge Athletes Foundation because we raise money to pay for, for basically uh, uh, every, any piece of equipment that's going to get you active uh, as, as, a, uh, as a person that has a, a physical challenge. So uh, Lance and I met. 2010, 12 years, 12 years ago, ago, right? Years and ago. I was I was a taco shy of uh, 300. One more burrito, I would have been there. Your nickname, and, <laughs> your nickname was Diesel. Diesel, he did. He, <laughs> he saw me riding a bike. He goes, <laughs> <laughs> he goes, hey Diesel, come here. So we became really close friends from there. And uh, and uh, my 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 uh, road to fitness was was uh, insured, but even better, um, we've raised a ton of money. So talk to us about about uh, a little bit about what you're doing this year because it's. it's special we're going to help you raise fifty thousand dollars for the we're challenge gonna, athletes is, is that what it, is that the number because we're going to give it a shot we're going to uh, so we've already committed to ten thousand of it yeah. okay and and we're going to put a donation link up here on the screen for you but talk about what you're doing well, i got 40 to go now that's easy okay come on all right yeah, talk about it a little bit what do you so what's the idea this yeah. year so this year will be my 10th year to actually do the ride down the coast um Actually, my 11th year to ride down the coast. The first year I did it in a car, yeah. and that didn't sit well. It didn't sit with me either because you were yeah. chirping at me the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, watching so from the sidelines, so to speak, just was not something that I was used to or accustomed to. So the next year we figured out a bike, and we built this uh, custom hand cycle tandem, one of a kind in the world. And, um, yeah, so 10 years now I've ridden down the coast with you. Lance rides down the coast with his arms, right? And and what's interesting is the 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 bike, the adaptive bike that we've got has a rider in the front, Lance in the back with his arms, and we've got guys helping. So it's a really cool, it's a cool team. We call yeah, it Team Lance. I couldn't, yeah, it was called Team Lance for a long now time. Now it's called Team now Chase. It's called Team Chase for a friend of ours whose son passed away from yeah. a muscular dystrophy. But uh, yeah, you know, I couldn't have. I couldn't ride down the coast by myself. I don't have the muscles. I don't have the ability to do the muscles. Lance, I want to talk about your accident real quick. Talk about that for a second because, because it's an interesting story that could have happened to anybody. Yeah, I was 21. I was canoeing on a river back home in Arkansas, and I dove in to retrieve a ball cap to cool off, and I made a bad choice and hit a rock and shattered it. my C5 vertebrae. So that was, that was 29 years ago this past August. Oh. Well, you're living a full life, and it's yeah, fantastic. I, and I, I want wouldn't to, for one, things. applaud you for everything that you are doing. Um, now, I don't want to forget Canine Companions, because this Please. has been a, this is one of the biggest parts of your life. Talk about that. Yeah, Canine Companions, my first service dog, pretty much it saved my life. Um, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't. Was that Augie? 
That was uh, Satine. You Satine. never met Satine, okay. but uh, you know, I I had uh, I went back home to small town Arkansas. I had a, a supportive community, loving family, but there was just not a lot of options there. There weren't a yeah. lot of resources, opportunities. Um, I came out here. So what happened from that was a lot of depression. Yeah, sure. And addiction, and just not you know just didn't want to be here. Yeah. Um, so I was grasping for something. All right. And I found this organization that trained dogs for people with had disabilities. And yeah. so I applied. I didn't really have any kind of an expectation. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know that when I came out here to get my first dog that I would find something that I wanted to be a part of. And I uh, completely did a 180 upon my arrival here. And so um, CCI has been a part of my life ever since that. I was 2004. and. I worked for the organization, I served on their board, um, and now I continue to stay involved and, and um, yeah, I'm just, I'm thankful for that organization and CAF and uh, just really lucky to be here and thankful. And uh, Well, let's get, let, let's get you supported for CAF this year and uh, kick off that uh, $50,000 um, uh, goal of Lance's and we'll put up, Sully Entertainment Group put up $10,000 to get you started. Okay, Thanks, and then we'll get uh, then we'll get uh, all KOSI listeners come and click the uh, click the link that you see up there on the screen, and we'll get it going, brother. Wow. And, we, and we get to let's listen. Let's listen. We raise a lot of money for a good cause here, but it's kind of a boondoggle. We get to stay in five star hotels down the road and stuff like that. And, you know, and you just keep the water to your right. We got drinks at the end of the day. It little is a little massage. Time. It is. It's basically it's a, a vacation time. that, that really benefits challenged athletes. Yeah. Good to have you, brother. Good to see you. More OTA coming up. I still got to ask Babakwa about yes. egos in, in, in the baseball. I got a lot of questions for both of them. We got more to come. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. I'm here. It's on the air. Francella, Lance, Kurt Babakwa. Mayor Rich and Bailey. Come on. Richard wow. makes up for the fact that I don't look at you guys. I can just look at Richard. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Thanks. Listen, this this this, you gotta this was, a, this you was gotta our romance. band. This was our band before we had yes. before we had the girls playing sax. Yeah. I don't know how the hell we got booked. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, real quick question. Question for Kurt Bavakwa. So when you get into the big leagues, you know, early 70s, you know, you're a kid. What was it like playing with like there's Hank Aaron right there in front of you, there's Willie Mays, there's I mean, what was that like for a kid in the major leagues? It was a lot of fun. It really was. I know you had uh, touched on something earlier, and the mayor also asked a question during one of the breaks about, you know, kind of glancing back and seeing the likes of Johnny Bench and, yeah, and yeah. things like that. I'll tell you when your career turns for the better is early on in my career, it was overwhelming. I mean, I'd go to the, I remember the first time I stepped to the plate at Yankee Stadium. Wow. And wow. Thurman Munson was the catcher. Jeez. My goodness. And it was overwhelming. But the announcer uh. that announced your name at Yankee Stadium. Yeah. I think his name was Bob Shepard. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I wish that somebody would have made the audio for me of him announcing my name because it was world you know yes. every player in the history of baseball wanted to hear it but then you turn around and you say you know it's kind of crazy you know i'm here yeah <laughs> there's the monuments out there as you're walking to the as you're walking to the batter's box yeah. you hear your name you see thurman munson uh -huh. i would have turned right around i don't know i don't <laughs> know that i could have continued to go yeah i didn't have much choice <laughs> but it, as overwhelmed as i was then i can remember Standing in the batter's box at Riverfront Stadium with Bench back there. Yeah, man. Uh, when I was with San Diego, mm -hmm. and going to the plate with all the confidence in the world, and looking back and going, "There's no way you're going to get me out here." I literally said that to him <laughs> one night <laughs> at Riverfront Stadium. Yeah. So that's the difference between a young kid. Yeah. And working your way through your profession and, and gaining some experience. Uh, gaining a little bit of ego, uh, knowledge of the game, and getting to the point where it's not that I'm facing Nolan Ryan. Yeah. It's <laughs> that Nolan Ryan has to get me out 
and that's it. That's a good shift, isn't wow. it? Yeah. That's an interesting uh, shift. That's a real good shift. So uh, speaking of that shift, I think that there's a lot of young players that go out there thinking that already without having proven anything, right? They're, they're, they're major league baseball player by title, but n neither, neither proved or earned, right? But yet they're that confident. Right. There's a lot of them nowadays, especially coming out of the Latin countries. Yeah. Uh, because they, they just grew up with the game to where uh, there's a lot of kids here in the United States that aren't growing up with the game the way we used to. Yeah. I mean, we played stickball in the street every single day. Sure. Right. They don't do that anymore. You never see kids in the neighborhood. Remember the that. game? I, I, I wonder if kids remember the game Three Flies Out. Remember Three Flies oh, Out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't even know that they do that anymore. Street All we were was a bunch of knuckleheads out in the field, and someone yeah. would throw a fly ball, and like, and, and if, you, if you get three flies, and you're out. And that was the whole game. Nobody does that anymore. They're going to pitching coaches. Mm. They're going to batting coaches and such. And I think that's the question I had for you because you had those, those crazy days of the '50s, dem bums, the, you know, the whole the whole personality in baseball. Had the same thing happen in the '80s. You know, with guys like, well, I, I keep on bringing up, you know, Bill Lee would be, a, you know, the spaceman. Would be a perfect example of some of the fun stuff. Now you see personalities today, but it's usually an ego personality with a bunch of gold chains. And, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but man, it sure was fun watching the Yogi Bears of the world uh, that I don't see we have anymore right now. Yogi was so great. Bill Lee's going to be on my podcast tomorrow. Okay, wow. tell us about the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Where, where do people listen? He's going to be on. Well, we can talk about. No, we want. I want people to clear in. What, how, <laughs> how do you, where how do we, we find, find it? it? Where do we find well, it? it's Dirty Kurtz Dugout. Dirty we, we Kurtz go. Dugout, uh -huh. which is my gang name, by the way. Uh, me, by the way, too. the new name of the band, Dirty Kurtz Dugout. <laughs> Change the logo. Dirty Kurtz Dugout. Where do we find it? I Dirty heard Kurtz or? Dugout. Uh, it's on YouTube, uh, Facebook. Right on. Uh, Apple. We gotta have you, you come know, in here. Do a do it do an episode here. You can have Dude. the studio. I'd, I'd do it just to watch one. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Bill we Spaceman Lee. Be, he's he's so, he is so funny. You know, he just had a heart attack last week. Well, I wonder why. Gee, the, it was the 80s. No, you know what he was doing? What? He, he was thrown in the bullpen <laughs> with the Savannah Bananas. <laughs> He's 77 years old, wow. and he dies in the bullpen. <gasps> they literally resuscitated him. No kidding. Yeah. He died on the mountain when he was playing for the Expos a few times. I watched him. <laughs> <laughs> Question for Mayor Bailey. Mayor Bailey, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of wrong, in my opinion, going on in San Diego and California. Every time we try to set up guests for KUSI, we always say, hey, let's get Mayor Richard Bailey. Because yeah. Mayor Richard Bailey knows how to do things. What can we do to fix San Diego and fix California? Gosh, well, I really... I mean, what can we do? It means what can you do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, qu quick story for you. I had a friend visiting San Diego for the first time in his life. And uh, we went to school together in college and uh, lost touch and then reconnected. And he flew out to San Diego to visit. And as I was taking him around different parts of San Diego, he said, isn't San Diego supposed to be America's finest city? Oh. And I never heard anyone kind of ask that question that way. And that, you know, I think we all kind of see it on the day to day. We see the crumbling roads. We see the, the homeless. We see the rising crime. Um, but because we experience it on a day to day basis, I think we just kind of accept it as normal. And here's a complete outsider coming in with this expectation that none of this is normal. And yet here it is. Like that is our reality. Yeah. And like, I, I'm a really big believer that part of the reason why we've strayed the way we have is because government in general has kind of lost sight over its, its core responsibilities. I'm, I'm a big believer that if we just got back to the basics, hey, local government, we should be providing for the public safety, we should be building sound infrastructure, and then we should be accomplishing those first two objectives in a very fiscally responsible manner, yeah. period. If we can get that done right, probably 90% of all of the problems takes care of itself. So I, I'm a... I think that we really just need to return to the basics. I, you know, we talk about some of these celebrities coming up through baseball right now and having all this confidence. I think right now we have a lot of unserious people in very serious positions within government. Mm -hmm. And they have these outsized personalities where they're almost using their position as a platform to elevate themselves versus working within the institution to uh, bring about the quality of life that we should all expect living in what should still be America's finest city. So, Ladies and so gentlemen, wait, 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 wait. So, 2026, I was Governor just, okay. <laughs> so for, no, so for, Speaking of platform, yeah. we've got a pretty big footprint here. Are you going to announce your run for mayor? I mean, uh, city <laughs> well, of San Diego? Yes. Well, I, mean, I think this is where you do it. Come the, on. This, is it, there it, any designs on being the mayor of San Diego? So, so as of right now, I, I'm very, very fortunate and blessed and honored to be the mayor of Coronado. Uh, I have two and a half years remaining in my term. 
And that's a Tombolo. Uh, Get over to the city. That's Tombolo. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. Well, we'll see one day in the Eighth future. Eighth largest city in the U.S. or Tombolo. It's or not Tombolo. a real. It's, exactly. But hey, Coronado. I, I mean, love Coronado. On. Coronado's not bad. We play the Coronado Summer Concert yeah. Series like, what, five, six times. We love Coronado. And we love having you. You're a fan favorite. We would your rather have you, uh, you know, sit Or you still live there. That's, You'd still live there. So this is this actually was kind of fascinating. You actually can't. So what? one of the very few requirements, for better or worse, of being a representative of your city is that you have to be 18 years of age and you have to live in that city. Yeah. So as long as I live within the city of Coronado, I could know I could not represent another city. So. Oh, I think we have donors that'll put you up in a one bedroom. Real sweet. <laughs> I think I think we Hope can figure. I think we can figure it out. <laughs> Uh, I will awesome. tell you. So, best of luck yeah. to you. You're doing a great job, Thank Kurt. You, it was so fantastic having you here, Lance. Hey, it was great. Always, I love you more than Thanks my parents. Yeah. Uh, you know that. And you and I get to spend a lot of time together, Francella. Always a great time having Good you. Good evening, guys. San Sally Diego. Man, take it away. Let's go. We got another week down in the pipe. Coming up on our 100th anniversary. Yeah. Right on, on the air. So go out there and have a great day. And check out your dew point.